Hey, welcome back. We're at 1 Samuel chapter 8 and verses 10 through 18. Straight to it here then, right? So Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who asked him for a king. And he said, This will be the behavior of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for his own chariots and to be his horsemen. And some will run before his chariots. He will appoint captains over his thousands and captains over his fifties, will set some to plow his ground and reap his harvest, and some to make his weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will take your daughters to be perfumers, cooks, and bakers, and he will take the best of your fields, your vineyards, and your olive groves, and give them to his servants. He will take a tenth of your grain and your vintage and give it to his officers and servants, and he will take your male servants, your female servants, your finest young men and your donkeys, and put them to his work, he will take a tenth of your sheep, and you will be his servants, and you will cry out in that day because of the, your king whom you have chosen for yourselves, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. Now that is a grim statement, isn't it? Here's a list of the way things are going to be that are not the way it is right now under the judgeship of Samuel, right? They didn't have to send their children to the army and have them plow a field for Samuel and... It's very much different under judgeship where everybody's taking their personal responsibility and having their part and you don't have this big bureaucracy going on or you don't have the, the mechanisms of control and potential tyranny that you'll have in a, in a more and more organized uh, with humans on top system. And so here's the long list of the things that's going to happen. We are basically talking about a dramatic change of the entire culture, the entire society. And yet it may seem surprising to us, but God says, sure, let's do this, because God knows the people need to learn. But anyway, coming back down to the end, what did we find at the very end? We want to redouble this. 18, and you will cry out in that day because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves. So when you get this, the grass is so green over there, but when you get this, when you're there, when this is the, the system is running this way, you are going to be very unhappy campers. And not only that, but the, the last word was the most uh, dangerous of all. And you will cry out in that day because of your king, whom you have chosen for yourselves, and the Lord will not hear you in that day. Now, this doesn't mean that God was just going to stop hearing all their prayers altogether. I think the history bears out as we carry on through that God still hears the prayers of his people. But what he's saying is, when you're tired of this and you're ready to abandon this thing and move on and not do this, but go back to the right thing, God says, I'm not going to change it at that point. I'm not going to hear your prayer to, hey, let's go back to the way it was before we were willful and, and uh, disrespectful to God. God says, I'm not going to hear that. You're going to be stuck. Think this through carefully before you say yes. Now, tomorrow morning, we'll see the response of the people. You probably already know what it's going to be. But anyway, back to you and I. What about us? Look how God, through his servant, laid it out so plainly. All the deficits, all the debits, all the bad things, the things that are going to turn out not so good. He laid it out, and yet tomorrow morning they're going to say, yes, we're going to do it anyway. So may God be our helper. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we are looking to be your followers we many times are dissatisfied, almost no matter what you do, whether it was Moses or somebody else. We were, humans always get dissatisfied. We always think we can make it better somehow. Your plan, however, Lord, is always best. So, oh, if we could only have the people go back and change this and make a different decision, but we know they're going to make the wrong one. Thank you, Lord, for being a teacher. Even if we get it so wrong, help us to learn from it, Lord, so that we can return to you more fully than we've ever returned before. Bless your people, help your people, have mercy and patience on us, Lord, and bring us back to the right spot. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So may God, so may we listen to uh, the Lord our God and take his counsel, because our counsel isn't worth anything. Turn to God and may God be with you today.